I am in the middle of totally redoing the shop right now. Uh, you guys can see we finally painted the foam that we put into the door here, so it's not that pink purpley color anymore. Uh, really brightened up the shop and super stoked about that. You might also remember that we used to have a bench over here in the corner and then we had a repurposed dresser right here. And then of course we have the French cleat wall. Now the only problem with the bench and the dresser and the French cleat wall is that it didn't really give me much storage. Now don't get me wrong, the French cleat wall is amazing and I really do recommend it as a very inexpensive, easy, to maintain a storage solution, but the problem is it collects dust. And over the last couple of years that I've had it there, the things I don't use all the time kind of just get coated in dust. The other thing is, is if there's a flat surface in my shop, I will find a way to cover it in nonsense. Now, the biggest problem for me is that my layout tools and everything that I used on a fairly regular basis were all over the assembly table, all over the bench, and everything was just sort of a mess. So I have upgraded to these boxes here. Now, I'm not totally done with this situation yet, but I wanted to take a minute and show you guys what exactly is in these boxes and all the stuff I was actually able to fit inside. All right, so this is the box that I got originally. It's a super heavy duty box. I thought that I was going to only have one box and kind of get a box that was more like this, but I went back and forth and back and forth as far as the drawers and how much stuff we could put in there and everything else. So this box is 52 inches wide. It is 21 and a half inches deep and it is 64 inches high. As you can see, I'm six foot. This thing is a freaking beast. It says capacity is 2,500 pounds. We are never going to fit that much in here. Uh, if we were having steel tools, mechanics tools and stuff like that, then I would say maybe. Storage, 36,795 cubic inches. I don't know how much that is. And 120 pound drawer slides and six by two inch casters. I can tell you that as heavy as this thing is, even empty, this thing just glides across the floor. Now, what I really like about this box is that it has a cover here. You can see, hopefully, all this dust. That means that the dust isn't on the stuff that's inside. This whole thing will lift up. It has these gas struts here so that it lifts up nice and quiet. It does have a light up here which will illuminate and everything will work when the lid is closed. Now this does have a flat surface with a rubber mat, but in here I can put my CAA glues, accelerants, regular glues, lubricants, stuff that I use all the time. And one of the coolest features about it is it has built-in power strips. So let me move these chargers out of the way. We have two power strips, one on each side. They're built into the walls of this, so you're not losing any room here. Each one has its own power switch. There's six outlets and two USBs. So this is really good for me because I can put a couple batteries in here for the drills and they're out of the dust. I can also bring in my camera batteries and stuff. Now this is something that before this was in the house, which means I had to stop what I'm doing, go in the house, dragging dust in and getting distracted. But now I'm able to have them out here. I could also plug my phone in. I could plug in the flashlights and stuff like that, which we will talk about this a little bit later in the video. It's a super cool new flashlight from Olight. Now this wall in the back is actually like a giant magnet. So I've got the wrench here that'll stick to the back of it here. But what I did instead so that I could utilize that space better is I actually put a magnetic bar up here. So what I have is one of these magnetic strips here. This is typically you would screw this to something and then put whatever you wanted to stick to it on here. What I've done is turned it around and I put it up here. So now I have router bits and wrenches and files and stuff like that up there. Those are all things that I use all the time. And the greatest part is they won't fall off when I close the lid. Now, one thing that I think is super important is if you have some shallow drawers followed by some little bit taller drawers and then some deep drawers. And typically that's how these boxes will show up, but there are some that have a lot of shallow drawers. And again, that's great if you have wrenches and ratchet handles and stuff like that. But for us, really you only need a couple shallow drawers. The other thing is, is with these little bit taller drawers, you can build your own things to put inside to separate things and stack stuff on top of each other. 
Now, in my top two drawers is where I wanted layout material. Now, this is why I say these shallow drawers are really good for stuff like this. So here I've got double squares, combo squares, uh, the Pelini pocket rules, just this is all stuff, even my tape, this is all stuff that I reach for all the time. But like I said before, it was laying out on the bench and collecting dust. Here we've got pencils, we've got marking gauges and feeler gauges and dividers and, and all this other stuff. Again, this is stuff I use all the time. So it's nice to have this up and organized and flat laid so that I know exactly where stuff is at. More importantly, I know where to put it back. Now in the drawers right beneath that, again, shallow drawers, we can flat lay. This is more like utilitarian type stuff, screwdrivers, pliers. This is stuff you reach for all the time, not necessarily woodworking related. Here I have chisels. So I have both sets of chisels in here and all my sharpening stuff. We got leather strop back here, an extra sharpening stone, and my primary sharpening system that I use as of right this second. And I was able to actually even fit the coping and fret saw in here as well. So this keeps stuff, again, at arm's reach, all flat laid. I can totally see what it is. Uh, some people might wonder on these smaller chisels, maybe they rock back and forth. Again, you can create your own things to put in here to make these work the way they are. So maybe later on down the road, I'll put a piece of wood or something in here with some notches in it that'll hold that, similar to how these are laid in here as well. Moving down from the shallow boxes, we're starting to get a little bit of depth to these. Now, this isn't an ideal situation for my hand planes, but I don't have very many hand planes. And what this does though, is it protects them and I don't have to worry about them being on the bench where they're going to accidentally get knocked off at some point. I haven't done it yet, knock on wood, but at least it gives them a nice home. Now, obviously if I expand my hand plane collection, we're gonna have to revisit this and do something else. But for right now, I think this is a nice little home. This drawer here has a specific purpose. And at first I thought it was a little bit gimmicky, but what we have here, this drawer will pull out all the way. And once you get it to the end, it'll kind of lock in place and you can just bump it to get it back in. And it's basically like a small workstation. So let's say I had some small part here and I just want to mess with this and clamp it. And I want the work up close to me. That's kind of cool. Now, in all honesty, I don't know how much I will actually remember that this exists, but it's nice to have. What's really cool though, is that this flips up and now we have the inside of the drawer. This is where I'm keeping my camera equipment. Now I know that's not gonna pertain to some of you guys watching out there, but I'm able to put sensitive items in here. I've got extra batteries and tripods. I've even got the gimbal and the monitor in here. And this is really good for me because this lid is going to add an extra layer of dust protection for those more sensitive things. And a few of you guys have called me out on having my camera gear laying around the shop and getting covered in dust. I got you covered. All right, now moving down from that, this is its own chest, and then this is working on the second chest down. We have a full width drawer right here, and this I thought would be a good spot to put basically guns and ammo. So I've got both nail guns in here, I've got the drill and the, the, the impact, couple screw box cases, uh, drill cases, excuse me, and then I've got um, basically all the ammo that goes to these things. These are things that I use all the time and I typically will kind of buy in bulk. And then over here, I just threw some magnets on the side to hold bits and whatnot. So this is nice. It's nice at waist height. I'm not reaching up high, but I'm not also not bending over to get some of this stuff. So this actually works out really well. All right, moving one layer down from our full width drawer. This again is more utilitarian. This is more like construction carpentry stuff, but I do reach for this stuff quite a bit and it's nice to have all these things in a drawer. This was actually in the old dresser that was over there. In this drawer here, I do realize this is not the most efficient use of space. However, this lets me keep sort of table saw related things in one home. My dado stack, I used to just kind of chase it around the shop as it was in my way I'd kick it away and it was filled full of dust and, and sort of neglected but I do have my dado cartridge and insert for the table saw and these blades while not the best way to keep these I can make something in here like a card stack almost that's hard to explain but something that allows me to shuffle through these and get the right blade that I want so remember with these little bit deeper drawers you don't necessarily have to have flat things in here we could build up and really make the most out of this space
Moving down one layer again, this is sort of a catch-all. Most of this stuff did come from one specific drawer over there. We've got tap and die sets and other random bits and whatnot. I've got cedar shims and this is pipe from an old job that I just can't bear to separate with. You just, just stuff, hinges and whatnot, but it's a good drawer for all that random type of stuff. Over here, this is more of the artsy craftsy type of thing. Glue guns, paint brushes, mica powders and dishes and stuff like that for that kind of project. This is where I've kind of, for now at least, decided to put sort of fasteners and hardware. You guys might recognize these. These are my box joint drawers that we made when we did the box joint drawer video, but they fit in here so well and it lets me separate some of the nuts and bolts and stuff like that from the oddball stuff. So this is like, these are for stucco. We're not gonna use these in a woodworking video, but I do need to have them and I need to have them organized. So this actually works really well. On this side, this is where I haven't really decided 100% what I'm gonna do, but I am really sold on these containers here. Originally I had this. The idea with this is that we could pull these out, bring them to the work and then have them be able to go back in their home. But the problem is, is we have some stuff like these wood screws here. I don't need a ton of these at a time and I don't need a mountain of them. This all came in one pack and these are actually for uh, silverware drawers for the kitchen. So pro tip, I suppose, is to take a look at those type of departments in stores and you can find these little cubbies and little things to keep stuff in. So it keeps things really nice and organized. All right, in the very bottom drawers, this is where you usually get really deep drawers, and this is no different. This one I haven't actually filled up yet, but this one I am surprised with how much I can put in here. I have a pneumatic finish nailer, a pneumatic crown stapler, a hole saw set, the heat gun, a jigsaw in a metal case, the plunge base for the router, the circular saw, the grinder, the restorer, and some bits and pieces all in this one area. This before, was scattered all over the shop. We had uh, open can, open carts with open shelves, so without cupboard doors, and this stuff was caked in sawdust and nonsense. And a lot of this stuff I don't really reach for all the time. Keeping it in here, all in one tight, compact spot, I think that's definitely gonna be a huge improvement here in the shop. All right, now this one is gonna go a lot quicker because I don't have a whole lot in here, but I'll give you some quick specs on this. Remember, that one was a more heavier duty one. In fact, they call it heavy duty. This one's a little bit more medium to light duty. So this one is smaller. It is 46 inches wide. It is 24 and a half inches deep. So just a tad deeper than that one. And then it's only 37 inches tall. So it kind of puts it more at like workbench height a little bit. Where this toolbox had 120 pound slides, this one's only at 100 pound slides. But again, remember, we're putting woodworking tools in here, not mechanics tools. So we don't really have to worry about that as much. And where that one was a 2,500 pound max capacity, this one is a 1,200 pound max capacity. So you can kind of tell the difference between the two. Now, I wanted one like this with this wood top. I think it goes better with the whole woodworking theme, but also because I needed somewhere to put a couple of the portable machines. So up here I have the sander and I have the planer. Now these two both used to be on their own rolling carts before, but they had open storage where it was just a place to collect dust basically. And one could argue that all I did is replaced those carts with this carts. That's true, but this one is more easy to move around the shop and this one has storage. That's something I didn't have with those other carts. Now I'm in the middle of this whole project so I don't have stuff in a lot of these, but you'll notice we have a nice wide drawer up here just like on the other one. You'll also notice that I don't have any shallow drawers. So again, that's one thing you have to kind of keep in mind when you're looking for this type of toolbox. I do have something in this drawer. This is sort of a collection of stuff, things that can't be in their own drawer. I have my hardware jig uh, kit here. This is always super handy to have front and center. So I'm able to keep it out of the dust this way, but then because it has a lid, of course, we keep it out of the dust this way. A couple of other little odds and ends. I actually don't have, oh, I do have, look, there's tape. These two drawers, I believe, are totally empty, but I do have stuff in this side. This is where I'm keeping my sanders for now. I really only use this one, so this one's up towards the front. I do have a palm sander and a backup orbital sander. I never use the belt sander. A couple accessories and stuff like that in here, but this is a good place to put those taller power tools. Moving up from there, I have random 
sanding stuff. You guys remember this was all up in the sanding station before. So I do use steel wool quite a bit when I'm finishing. I also use sanding blocks. So those are up towards the front. Then I have wet dry sandpaper. I like to keep that stuff in their original packaging so that I can keep them organized and I can also see what I have in case I need to get more. So those are in their packages stacked up over here. We got flexible sandpaper, micro mesh, again, quarter sheet sand, quarter sheet paper for the palm sander. But since I rarely use it, again, I like to keep them organized in their packages. And then the Nylox brushes, stuff like that. Up here, I have full sheets. I have 60 all the way up to 400. I don't know if I'm sold on this way of organization, but it works for me for right now. It lets me see the sizes. It also lets me see how much of which one I have in case, again, I need to replenish stock down the road. And then up front here, this is where I can keep sanding pads and homemade sanding blocks and the like. Now up here, because I use this stuff more than the other stuff in the lower drawers, these are my five inch discs. I have them by type and by size. So I have here everything from 80 all the way up to 400 on the Cubitron. And since I've primarily switched to this, this takes up the most of the space. And then I have the other brands and whatnot here. But this is really handy because then I know exactly what I have. And once again, it's nice to be able to see that I need more of this when I'm at the store or when I'm heading to Taylor Torx. I can go pick up more as need be. I mentioned I wanted to talk about this flashlight later in the video. This is the newest release from Olight. This is the Baton 3 Premium Edition. You get the Baton 3, the light itself, which is replacing the two, and this is a wireless charger, which is, I think, so cool. So you drop this in here. This will charge this flashlight 3.7 times. It is a USB-C type port. And you can see the little red light there says it's actually charging our flashlight as we speak. Now the Baton 3 does come with a significant upgrade from the Baton 2. With things like a 20 day runtime and 1200 lumen max output. Of course, like the Baton 2, we also get several power modes, a low, a medium, a high, turbo, and a seizure mode. Well, I call it seizure mode. They call it strobe. I guess that's more appropriate. Now, I don't use my baton as an everyday work light. And the reason is it's just a little too small for that. So this, uh, the blue one actually, the two, actually lives on the side of our refrigerator and everybody in the house knows like that's one place that they can go to get a charged flashlight. Now, Olight also sent this. This is the brass edition of the i3T. I think this is an adorable flashlight and I really honestly love the brass of it. It's Got some heft to it, I suppose, but it's not nearly as bad as the copper edition uh, i5T, I think, that I got a while back. Two modes, a low and a high, and it actually works really great. And what's great about this is you don't even have to worry about charging it. It just runs on a AAA battery. Now, Olight is having a flash sale on all of these. If you hit the link in the description, the flash sale is only for the 19th of March. So the day this video gets released. But if you miss that day, you can always save 10% using the link in the description and typing in Inspire10 at checkout. Thank you as always to Olight for sending these out. Don't forget to go check out the link in the description and save yourself some money. So now I've shown you what's in my drawers. We are gonna do a lot more stuff in here. I'm gonna get rid of the French cleat system, I think. Uh, we are finally going to remake the paint cabinet. I'm going to narrow it up. I'm gonna lengthen it out, I think. And we're going to do something very similar for clamps because I can't stand that my clamps are here. This bench is actually going to completely disappear. Uh, we're going to dismantle it. I'm gonna make a really nice one that's more tailored to, uh, well, it's gonna be an outfeed table, but it's also going to be better for hand tool work as well as I get more into that. So pretty much everything in here will disappear. I'm also thinking about moving the miter station, maybe over here, maybe over the, I don't know, but we're doing it either way. It's all I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next video. I always have this habit of going back and double checking to make sure I'm plugged <laughs> oh. in. I've done a whole video before where this was pulled out just a little bit. That would and suck. There was no audio and I had to reshoot the entire thing. So I'm always like, I feel like I'm gonna fall off this and somehow. I don't know why. <laughs> well, that'll make good footage. Yeah, <laughs> except it's not on me. I'll do one of those beep things where it like goes to those straight bar things. <laughs> really well.
And then I broke it. How did I break it? Wait, please tell me I, I caught that on camera. <laughs> Would have been a great blooper. <laughs> <laughs> and then I break it. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it's there. I'll I'll put it in there. Be <laughs> that I need more of this when I'm at the store or when I'm heading to TaylorToolworks.com. I can go pick up more as need be. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That kind of just <laughs> so this is the one. I See? <laughs> oh, that, that noise was amazing. <laughs> that's, that's, those are things we need to put in the like, highlight reel at the end. <laughs> and see this right here, this is more fun though. Mm -hmm. Or as I call it, funner. Because, <laughs> because this let, lets me be me and mm -hmm. have fun and laugh and like yeah. have some sort of interaction. Uh, when I do this by myself, it's mostly vulgar words that <laughs> fly out of my mouth. Because I'm like, <laughs> And then I gotta start over. Uh, but this is good.